The Crafted Scatter Signal is the rapid fire solution to overshields, woven mail, and even warlock rifts, making it the most consistent rapid fire frame fusion rifle you could take into Destiny 2 PvP. There's no surprise that Scatter Signal is instantly a big win in PvE. It's the first rapid fire frame fusion rifle with controlled bursts, and we'll all go over how to craft it to simultaneously protect you from boss damage and dish out boss damage at the same time. The real surprise, I mean, like, I am shook, is that it absolutely shreds in the current Crucible sandbox, thanks to one unbelievable perk. We'll start there in PvP by first looking at the stats. Scatter Signal is the first strand rapid fire frame fusion rifle. That means it has a charge time of 500 milliseconds, fires 9 bolts, and needs to connect 7 of those 9 bolts in the Crucible to take out any Resilience Guardian. It's the second rapid fire fusion we've got in the kinetic slot, and thank goodness, we are no longer stuck with the trash stats of Riptide and PvP. In fact, outside of the extremely out of band aim assist on Cartesian coordinate, Scatter Signal has the best stats nearly across the board of any rapid fire frame fusion rifle in Destiny 2. The highest range, stability, and recoil direction stats, and if you take away Cartesian, Scatter Signal also has the highest aim assist at 39. That's eight more than Riptide, the equivalent of running two helmet targeting mods. I first noticed the range in aim assist when I had a roll that dropped with all range, hammer forge, projection views, and a range masterwork. It didn't have any good perks, but through just the stats alone, I was landing one burst with a rapid fire frame that made me literally stop in my tracks realizing I had no accuracy perks on. So, we're already at a good spot here before we even get to the perks, but we're gonna build off the perks to get to an amazing fusion rifle. Scatter has a lot of stuff in the perk pool you've never seen on a fusion, and for PvP, that is going to throw a lot of people off. I'll admit up top, for a moment, after a ton of testing, I was one of those people, but then I found the key that sets it apart from the likes of Cartesian and Zealot's Reward. I'm not talking kickstart, you could for sure use that if it's in your playstyle and you just want a kinetic slot iterative loop, and I'm not talking the new deconstruct perk, which I had already experimented on and appears to have a bug or something. It doesn't activate against barricades unless you hit the actual opponent with a shot first making it a dead on arrival perk for me. A lot of wasted potential I might cover in another video. I'm also not talking about the combination of Encore, Adagio, and Dragon's Vengeance for a potential 93 range on a Rapid, although I'll present that as an alternative role. What I am talking about is how Under Over on Scatter Signal is a game changer on Rapid Fire Fusion Rifles. I know. I know, and trust me, this isn't even another slick draw Aramite situation where it comes down to feel. This is a mathematical game changer for rapid fires, a solution to the one reason you wouldn't run a rapid fire, overshields and woven mail. Did you know that at base, for a normal rapid fire fusion rifle like Iterative Loop, it is impossible to one burst a tin result guardian with woven mail? I covered this recently in my ultimate guide to charge time video, which you should definitely subscribe to the channel to make sure you're notified of great info videos like that for, but in that guide, I talked about how it would take 10 bolts of a rapid fire frame fusion to one burst a guardian with woven mail, which is impossible. Rapids only fire 9 bolts, so you literally cannot do it. Up to this point, Woven Mel has been the counter to rapid fires. If you have a rapid fire frame with high impact reserves, congratulations, you can now potentially get rid of your opponent with Woven Mel using all 9 bolts, but you have to be absolutely perfect. Under Over changes that, giving you a 20% buff against Overshields and Woven Mel. This is the only fusion rifle in the game to have Under Over, the first time we're seeing it. And it allows you to go from needing 10 bolts to take down a Woven Mel Guardian to only 8. It gets even better if consistency is what you're after. If you run Liquid Coils, you can 8 bolt Overshield 10 Resil Titans as well. The extra damage only happens while they have the overshield active, which is why you need liquid coils, otherwise it doesn't really do much and remains 9 bolts. We'll talk in a second about which I recommend because I've still got one more bonus of running under over. Under over is kryptonite to healing rifts. With enhanced under over and liquid coils, you can 6 bolt warlocks up to 7 resil in a healing rift. Unlike Overshield Titans, the Rift acts as a constant overshield to Warlocks and allows your under over bonus damage to apply to your whole burst. That's only 6 out of your 9 bolts. 
Without liquid coils and just enhanced under over, you're still six bolting up to five Rizzo Warlocks in their rift, so they are actually better off not in their rift than in it. This is huge and caused me to basically go Warlock hunting all Iron Banner. If you're worried about the Rizil checks, keep in mind that Warlock rifts take forever to get full overshield and the damage is so close that if they're not at that full overshield you'll six bolt regardless. So already just for fighting woven mel and warlocks I know I want to have this fusion and I know I want to craft it with under over. The question is do I want to craft liquid coils so that I can eight bolt titans in an overshield too? It's a big price to pay. Giving up that precious speed and plus 10 range I could have had from projection fuse but it does make you super consistent against pretty much any kind of player you could face in the game. So I played extensively with both, in competitive and in Trials of Osiris, and I've landed on going with Projection Fuse. The range benefits are just too great on Rapid Fire Fusions, which need every drop they can take. And it's not like I can't take out a 10 result Overshield Titan still, I just have to land all my bolts. I still get to 8 bolt Wolven Mel Guardians and 6 bolt Warlocks and Healing Rifts. I totally get it if you want that consistency with Liquid Coils, I thought I might end up leaning that way, but let's complete the rest of the god roll to show you why I landed where I did. So I know I want Projection Fuse and Under Over. I said I liked having all range in the stats, so where did I land on that? I for sure want a range masterwork to keep pushing that range out. I also landed on keeping a counterbalance mod no matter what I did with the barrel. That amount of recoil control felt great on this rapid, but I was really torn on the barrel and the third column perk. Encore did not seem to be doing it for me and every time I tried full bore or extended barrel it didn't feel quite as good as that original hammer forge roll I had. I came to realize that stability and handling played a role in how great this first roll had felt, and so I slapped on perpetual motion to even out the stability and handling and be able to still run full bore without any deficits. This is it. This is the roll that hit the spot. I'm still running the max range possible on a rapid at base, 58. I've got perpetual motion, pushing my stability to 48 and handling to a nice 69. The counterbalance mod puts my recoil direction at an incredible 74, and with all my targeting mods, I'm at 49 aim assist. To run this much range on a rapid fire and it feel this good is crazy. Any other rapid either can't reach that range or you need arrowhead break to bring the recoil direction down, but you really don't need it here. Plus you're doing all of it while 8 bolting woven mel guardians and 6 bolting warlock rifts. We've also finally got an origin trait that's useful for fusions as well. Dragon's Vengeance is a perk that acts kind of like a mini version of Eye of the Storm and Alacrity mixed together. If you get weak or if a teammate dies, your weapon is auto-loaded and you've got 11 seconds of a boost to range, handling, and charge time. We don't know specifics on range and handling yet, but charge time appears to be very minimal, like one frame faster, which I'm kind of glad about because I would hate for it to be significant and a teammate randomly die and make my fusion go off when I didn't mean for it to. The big bonus here is the extra range and handling, and I've even felt it kick into effect in the middle of a burst I was firing when my shield went down in a fight. That extra range felt like it gave me just a bit of a push when it extended my accuracy cone, so the origin trait is icing on top of an already amazing fusion. I'll also say I tried experimenting with this exact build without perpetual motion to see how I could push it but you sacrifice a lot of consistency and I could feel that loss of stability and handling with the way this setup has full bore. So perpetual motion really does even it out. I also tried running slice to see if it would save me in some gunfights. It will give the strand debuff sever to any enemy you hit with your weapon after using your class ability, but I really feel like that perk is going to shine on primary weapons more than special weapons. On a fusion, if I don't get the one burst off, I'm usually dead in a fight anyways. Before jumping to PvE, I want to mention that all range PvP build I first tried to craft. The thought was to push this range stat since that was already a strength with this fusion. I saw Encore which is a perk that can give you plus 5 range and a bit more accuracy every time you get a kill, and then in the 4th column I saw Adagio which also gives you more range and damage. Then even in the origin trait, Dragon's Vengeance, if a teammate dies and you get low on health you get a bump in range and charge speed as well. So that's 3 different columns of range boosts on top of what is already the highest base range available on a rapid fire fusion. If Dragon's Vengeance turns out to be even just 5 range then that's a potential 94 range you could hit. 
Unfortunately, Encore only gives you one stack for body shot kills. You can't get the quick two stacks like you could on precision weapons. Now that's still up to plus 20 range instantly from all these perks off of potentially one kill, but this doesn't hold anything. When you compare it to the guaranteed plus 30 range from Killing Win and Adagio on Iterative Loop. I wanted the accuracy from Encore to make a difference, but just trust me, I played around with it a ton and just could not compete against the best. This is when I pivoted from trying to make this work and embrace the beauty of the most consistent rapid fire fusion you could bring into the Crucible with Under Over. In PvE, Scatter Signal is honestly a godsend for me. I love the idea of hard hitters like Aramite, Loaded Question, and Nox Perennial 5 with control bursts, but I just can't stand the long charge time. Particularly in activities where I'm on the move a lot and don't want to walk charging it for so long if I'm not using it against a boss. Sure, if you're only judging boss DPS and that's it, then this fusion will not do as well as the hard hitting impacts we have available, but if you like using something faster on the go to clear adds and still pack a punch, I think you'll find Scatter Signal does the job really well. On the subject of strictly damage versus the alternatives, I'd also like to sway your attention away from the overflow perk. Yes, it is super easy to just pick up massive amounts of ammo and never worry about anything else running just that and controlled burst, but I recently saw fellow YouTuber Henra point out that you can use this perk slice to sever bosses even when they have an immune shield still up. This means you can use your class ability and sever bosses before, during, or after DPS phases to protect your team. This ultimately has become my favorite way to run the fusion in PvE. There is just so much utility and the reload speed at base is totally fine on this rapid fire without overflow. I wouldn't even consider running enlightened action because while you can get so many stacks of reload and handling quickly with a fusion, ultimately overflow is better for magazine control. Encore, surplus, loose change, and perpetual motion all fall way short in PvE, so it's really just slice versus overflow. In the fourth column, controlled burst is the given, but I do want to point out that under over is a 125% increase against combatant shields. So if you're ever in an activity where shields are giving you a problem, bust out your PvP under over roll. Could help you out a bit before you get to the boss. Everything else falls flat compared to control burst. 10% faster charge time and 20% increased damage for free is just too good. The PvE god roll for me would be full bore enhanced battery slice and control burst with a charge time masterwork. Remember, as I talked about in my charge time guide, charge time masterwork is now just free speed. For PvE, that's a must have. And then I'm running full bore because I don't want damage fall off to be hurting my damage if I step away from the enemy for a bit. Damage falloff hits hard on these. Then Slice is just so unique and brings a lot of safety to your engagements. Most of the activities and DPS setups I use don't fly through my entire fusion mag anyways. I'm not soloing any raid bosses, I just want something that is all around useful, puts out damage, and feels good to use. I've crafted two versions of fusions in the past, one for PvE and one for PvP, but many of them I end up deleting after a short while because I found new fusions to take their place. With Scatter Signal, there is so much utility here that I can't see myself replacing either version with anything soon. In PvE, there's really nothing in the kinetic slot like it, let alone a fusion with abilities like Slice that can still pour out damage. In PvP, I think it'll be hard to use Scatter Signal over Burden of Guilt and Deliverance in the Kinetic slot, but for Speed and Woven Mel Guardians, I'm always going to keep my PvP God Roll crafted. I'm actually jumping back into the edit after already recording everything to say I am loving this thing. I was primarily using it in competitive Rumble and Trials, but bringing it into Iron Banner has shown me it really can excel in all environments because it's ready to face anything. I don't want to overhype it, but Every person I talk to feels it's incredible thanks to its stats and consistency. Scatter Signal is easily in the A to S tier with its utility alone, and I almost can't believe the stat package it was able to bring with it. It is really, really good and is making a bid for the top rapid fire fusion in the game. This has been Legolith Flash, until next time, GG.